A second? Second. Second by Councilor and Richards. Uh, those in favor? Aye. 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 Stand I call for five minute recess and take a five minute break so we go to the restroom. My entire history of the one meeting where the adjournment actually failed. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a procedural issue. <laughs> yeah. It was funny. We took a break and then we came back, and not enough people had come back to form a quorum to actually accept <laughs> the adjournment motion. Certainly. <laughs> Technically, we couldn't restart, so we couldn't have the <laughs> Yeah, I got it. Oh, God, I love it. I don't think I've ever a good argument while we shouldn't do
It takes a really long time. But we, we um, gave you a copy of the housing plan just in case you had questions about it so you could look over it and then um, hopefully we can improve it next month. Carol, I think it looks really good. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Really looks good. I think it's great. Uh, there wasn't a lot of places where we could um, make changes or adjustments, uh, but there was a lot that we talked about. It was a great meeting. I told everybody afterwards it was really good. We have a great housing board commission. Do you have the application now? No, not yet. Still not yet. <laughs> We're getting closer. I promise. It takes a lot of time. It does take a lot of time. Can we use some more? Also, for demolition. Uh huh. And this has to go into the state. The state has to approve the plan, and they send it back to us with their blessings. Correct. Then we can put it in. Then we have our public meeting. Yeah. And then we, so, meet. and then we give out applications, which is probably at least another 30, 45 days. Well, probably past that because we, have, we haven't approved this yet. We'll approve this in the next meeting. Yeah. Hopefully. Has this <coughs> planning process had anything to do with this? The city. The comprehensive plan had a housing um, part of it that definitely had to do with the housing assessment tool. Um, there was a housing study that Hannah Keelan did that has helped us apply for everything that we've done, everything that I've done, because I look back on it. Even just the demographics of the houses, the houses which need rehab, which needs demo, um, the mapping that they've done for us as far as housing and what we have and what we need, I use that often. Have it readily accessible usually. Would you have a section of the city for each grant? I mean, for a grant or we just we left it city? wide open. We did. We left it wide open for the pre applications um, and to kind of see where they came from. And they did come from across. We did eliminate um, anything in the floodplain, um, is what we eliminated just because that was too much to go through and we would have had to change it. So we agreed all to eliminate that part. But everything else that's across the city. Which is sometimes hard. You don't see maybe the direct impact, um, but we just we thought it was better this time, and we had a lot of applications. I think we're at fifty plus, so pre applications. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. It's very great. exciting. We can never get there. Thank you. All right. Can we stay up here for the next one? <coughs> yeah. <laughs> let's talk about neighborhood hey, revitalization. Neighborhood revitalization. Your favorite thing. It is. I'm so excited about this. Uh, okay. Neighborhood revitalization. We are uh, up. To renew the neighborhood revitalization program uh, we have to have that renewed by October 1st um, if you probably heard the county made some changes there was lots of discussion on a county level about what to do with the neighborhood revitalization program and we did make some changes uh, most significant um, we stuck with the 10-year plan uh, so I think that's great where the 10 years are we changed the percentages a little bit on um, what the applicant gets it's in it's in more favor of the taxing entity, so it's better for you guys and not as good for the applicant. Um, but it's still it's still very good. Uh, just so you know, as far as the rebate goes, in year one they get 95% back, year two 90, 80, 70, 60, all the way down. Um, the other changes were really things that helped the staff at the courthouse, application fees, how you actually applied for it. Um, nothing really that will affect us here. Um, there are a couple of changes that could. If taxes are not paid in full on or before May 10th, then the plan is voided. So they've had some issues on a county level with the taxes not being paid on time um, and delinquent, and we're going to put a stop to that. So they need to be paid. I think so too. I think so too. It's fair. Um, everyone on the uh, the county side has to sign off on it before it can be approved by the commissioners. Um, each property owner may appeal on an informal level, um, but after that appeal process, then they need to be paid. Well, what about somebody renting a house and <coughs> of the house has to pay the taxes? And then they're in trouble. The owner, but the owner will be the one that's getting the rebate anyway. Yeah. So hopefully they'll continue to pay that. Um, if you want some numbers, I have some great numbers as far as neighborhood revitalization. Uh, we, uh, Mitchell County as a whole has an appraised valuation of uh, $404 million. Uh, we have an assessed value of $68 million. Um, 
Neighborhood revitalization has contributed to over $50 million in capital improvements. Five zero, fifty million dollars in capital improvements um, since 2007. That equals over 8.7 million in assessed valuation in Mitchell County. Um, so just so you know, I know, it's insane. Just so you know how much we've grown. Um, in 2011, we were at 58. Uh, 2012, 63. And 2013 is 67.8. So it's been some huge growth. I've talked to some people, um, some other economic development people across the state, and the first is significant, which is great, and you can tell. So that's always really good. Uh, I have already spoke to the school districts, because uh, it's everybody that's a taxing entity in Mitchell County, so it's USD 272 and 273. And I've also spoke to Cocker City, and everyone's on board. Everyone realizes it's a great program, that it promotes all the growth and development that we need. And so that's my spiel. If anyone has any questions about that? Thank uh, you. Thank good. You. Very you excited about that. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Next on the agenda <laughs> and the discussion items is the electric utility extension policy. Can you let me know how come up with addresses, please? We brought this to you here probably a couple of months ago and we're going to bring it back to kind of see uh, whether we got enough support to bring some formal action. Uh, there's been a few little changes here on since we talked to you, so I'll kind of just go over the whole thing. Uh, the electric utility extension, the cost of material, what we're after, the extension of the electric service inside the settlement will be paid by the customer requesting extensions. Uh, the superintendent of distribution, maintenance, and the administrator will be responsible for determining and preparing all bill, billing, and related documents. The cost can include, but is not limited to, poles, wire, and transformers. Uh, the utility system will not pay for any of the cost of the extension associated directly with the particular hookup hook request. <coughs> the customer's uh, request and service will pay an equal percentage of the total cost to uh, the total number of services the transformer can serve. Uh, most transformers the city set are good for four services. Uh, when other customers hook up, they will pay an equal percentage of the total cost. Uh, if the transformer cannot feed any other services, the customer will pay the entire cost. Uh, the director will have the final say for the size and location of the transformer. There is one thing I thought about maybe uh, visiting with you that we may want to put in here. Uh, the director, I think, should have the final say on the metering. Uh, the reason I'm thinking this, uh, we've got some customers that order these big transformers in. And I've been looking for a way of maybe charging them for the wine loss on them. And uh, there is a way of doing it if if you have a big split line loss. Okay, line loss. If you have a transformer out there that is not being used 60% of it with its rate of capacity, there's line loss on it uh, the whole time. And uh, I didn't bring the information, but uh, some of those get up into $2,000 a year or more. Uh, depending on the size of the transform. And so we're kind of looking for a way to maybe recruit for that. And uh, if if we put a uh, primary electric meter on them, that's going to meter the line loss on that transformer, and that customer's going to be paying for it. Uh, I didn't include that. Uh, it was an afterthought that came after we made this up. And I talked to Alan. He's the uh, one that does most of the metering work. For us to make sure that it wouldn't be near that and all indications that he has it will so it was a thought that that I thought of bringing out here on this that we may want to consider doing but uh, to hook up primary metering on a pole mount we did one out uh, south of town here and it's around ten thousand dollars but if you do one on an underground it's going to be about thirty thousand so they're not cheap how many of these do you think we need to do? It all depends on how many uh, hookups come out of this. There's quite a few hookups out there we need to do something with. But this here is just to take care of the ones that come up after this. We still have to deal with those others somehow. And I haven't got all the information yet on what other towns are doing. Uh, 
but what little bit of information I've gotten, I really haven't liked. So I haven't received too much, but this is something we can do from here on to try to help protect that. I mean, we can put it on or we can leave it either way. But I thought we ought to bring that out. And there is another ordinance that we're kind of thinking about trying to do something with. And that's on these temporary electric services we have for someone to build a house. Uh, a lot of towns are charging so much for uh, a couple of them are charging $50 for three months rent. And I'm looking for $50 every six months. And what I'm going to do is just recoup the cost of the expense of that temporary maintain it. <coughs> so that's kind of what we're after. Does that reduce our cost from the labor and everything else involved to put in that temporary service? No, it just recoup the cost. Should uh, be a little <coughs> higher than it? Uh, it could be. Probably should be. You know, if we're trying to look at recoup and cover our expense, we probably ought to be looking at the whatever it is. Uh, That's my feel. I, I don't think we ought to lose money on it. Well, Some things we do for incentive. But, uh, most of the stuff we're doing, and we're trying to break even, like uh, recoup the cost of the electric extensions. Uh, our cost is going up so high. If we could just recoup that, to me, that's a gain by itself. Right. At least it's not costing us anything. And then we're still getting maybe expansion of growth up. But I think if we make it too high, uh, high we may run into a problem with that. But you've got to realize, Ron, any cost you had incur that you don't collect is being paid by the right so the employee. And, and that's true. That's so true. that we need to avoid that mm -hmm. as much as we can. And for most of these people, it's, it's going to be a one-time shot. Right. Mm -hmm. You're building a new house, so you got to pay a hundred bucks for a temporary year. I don't think that's. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying we need to go in there wrong and you know, make make money. Yeah. But as long as we can come in there and break even. Yeah. And you know, and if you're saying fifty dollars uh fifty dollars is it. to recover the cost of the breaker box because that's what you have to up. And then you use that again down the line. Right. Mm -hmm. next, you know, as far as labor to put it in. Well, well, I, I didn't really include much on labor on, on anything because I figured the city was gonna have that expense and I mean there could be something sad that you want to cover your your uh, cost of labor too uh, but I'm trying to hold back on it on part of the expense yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well we could we could sure bring that up a lot more I mean I imagine it'll take Steve probably two hours to do that he gets 25 bucks an hour you know we used to figure on a project you had your project your overhead which was labor equipment or equipment was 100 percent of what your material cost so, you know, if it's costing you fifty dollars for the equipment, you're probably spending another fifty on. Well, I don't have a problem moving up to hundred. That would be equal to what the other towns are doing. Well, if, if, if it's covering our expenses, and that's yeah, what we want to yeah, do, you know, right. it's, it's almost like making money because we're not. Losing. Well, that's what I look at it. We're <laughs> we're, we're making, making money by not losing. Anymore. For years and years and years, we have given away, given away, yeah. given away. It's time that we are getting revenue and paying for wire that's gone up, you know, your labor, your machinery that breaks down, you have to repair that. It's just three hundred thousand dollar bucket. That's yeah. right. Well you on just, <laughs> on these uh, extensions, I tried to keep some of that off because we, we passed the deal outside the set limits. I want to keep a gap between them if we can. You know, so if somebody wants to build out there, they can look at it, and choose to stay out or come in for the sake of you know, uh, I think we need to keep a look at that too. No, oh, uh, pay a premium. Well, you know, one thing you got to look at when it comes to labor, you, you got the guys making twenty five dollars an hour. You got to figure in what it costs the city for health insurance, payroll taxes. That all enters in what it costs the city for that guy to be out there. Well. And uh, you know, your your labor force is one of the biggest expenses that you incur. And so I'm, I'm not sure. I think we need to quit giving away labor to some extent. Well, on the temporary, like I 
receive given and charging for labor if that's what we want to do on that. But on, on the other, I'd sure like to try to keep it down. And uh, then as we go through on our uh, fee schedule, if we think we want to adjust it, do that every year. Uh, and if we see that we're getting in trouble, making it too high for for growth, and back it off or, or stay put. So. <coughs> but this, no matter what you do, it's still going to be better than what we've got now when we get away. Well, you're on the and right this, track anyway. That's and then this is for basically inside the city. Inside the city limits. We're not doing anything outside that, that we hadn't already done, what, three or four months ago. Yeah. Got to cover your costs. Well, let me, uh, <coughs> I'll bring something back on a formal action, and uh, if anybody got, got any ideas on how much more we, uh, percentage we should put on something like that to, to make it go, I'm sure be interested in doing it here from you. Are you doing anything with your, with your rates? Uh, Glenn's working on that some right now. Yes, we're, we're doing a rate study. We do have a policy that um, takes into account if we go out and do a job for somebody and we have to furnish the man power, there is, I must think it was 25%, not to look at my book, uh, where you would add on for like the, like you say, the um, insurance and all of that stuff. Uh, because you can't, when you, I mean, some of that, you have to have operators for it. You don't just let any citizen come in and, and use the equipment. We have a policy that uh, if we have a wreck out there and someone damaged our equipment, material, we charge them for anything, labor, equipment, and then I think that's where you're going to see that 25% added to the total cost. That's one thing I've found so far on that where you can do that. It's, it's, in, it's in policy. Right, and it is a policy. So. Okay. Anything else, Robert? No, that's all I got. I'll try to bring something back on the formal action. Uh, it would be nice to get something going on this. Uh, I mean, eventually I'd like to think that that uh, <coughs> is gonna open up. So it'd be nice to have something in place. So we at least recoup some of our costs there. Uh, if we don't have this in place when they do that, the way I look at it, we're going to get it done. We'll, we'll get it there. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Ron. Thanks, Ron. Next item in discussion items is the KDOT geometric contract. This is this is for the latest uh, round of improvements on, on K14. Uh, I just got this. Uh, contract yesterday uh, and it's the one that Katie was talking about as far as getting the uh, utility easements and whatever so but I put it in front of you tonight and I, I don't anticipate any more changes from KDOT um, they made a lot of changes so far they're promising this is their final version of this and it, it basically refers to our grant that we received um, for that to, to take care of that dip that's in there for the flooding problems are on 14 right there this is basically from 8th Street to 24 Highway. I mean, well, we, yeah. we've done a lot of that so far, but it's just that little piece that's left in there. That, that, that's why it falls under the geometric improvement part of this thing. So, so that's, you know, we've been working on that for a number of years, actually. <coughs> so, <coughs> like Tom's. Yeah, that piece Tom's that they did the yeah. piece, yeah, yeah, we've well, been actually, left in there. It's actually, it's really short. It's Chapman's and Schmidt's. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's where it is. And, and it's like that yeah. box. <laughs> Specifically, yeah, the box is going to be three times the size of what it is now, and then they've got to move the road up. We've got to sand the ditches and do grading and surface and all of that. So, is that going to be next summer that we start on that? Yeah, we, we want to get the uh, easements, and then they're going to do the bid lighting here, and then, yeah, with the plan to be going forward here uh, into next year on that. So, hopefully, the, the whole thing is to mitigate some of that flooding that uh, <laughs> we've experienced for years and years on that, that piece of ground. Excuse me. Go ahead. Um, if we have already gone through up the both sides of the road there, where we uh, we're putting in water line, 
sewer line up to the like the old motel and whatnot. If we already have previous utility easements that we've re we've done, would you have to go back and get? Well, these are right away easements. Yeah, and that's some of them are just temporary easements, just okay. for the period right. of time when the work's going on. Just for the construction. Period. Okay. okay. Only okay. permanent ones would be the right of ways. Yeah. Because they've got to make the road a little bigger. Okay. So. Thing. We all have to 